Today, we are building an $850 completely custom workstation that has eight cores, two graphics cards, 64 gigabytes of RAM, the whole nine yards, and we are going for the full professional workstation level. We're talking about Xeons, we're talking about Quadros, we're talking about full level, professional, ECC, RAM, all this stuff to get a fully professional workstation that meets, I guess, technical workstation requirements. So yes, there will be a lot of people down in the comments going, why did you get Quadros? Quadros are inefficient, blah, 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 blah. There are lots of opinions on all that stuff. First off, I wanted to go for an official workstation just because of the ECC RAM memory checking in the Quadros. I also wanted to get ECC RAM for the RAM. Uh, I also wanted to make sure I had a Xeon just so that it met all the requirements of a full-on workstation. Obviously, you can do better, I guess, distribution of your money in certain places, and I'm not going to lie there, uh, but I did want to go for something that was mainly focused on a full professional video editing kind of situation. Now, obviously, me being a video editing person using this channel and things like that, I wanted to kind of see what I could build. Now, obviously, a lot of these parts I ended up actually getting for free or somewhat of those. Um, but I did want to make sure that I point out that this is a workstation that I feel like is professional level. Like obviously you can go build a PC that probably has better performance with a new Ryzen and things like that. And actually a Ryzen might even be better for this situation. But this is what I had and I wanted to go, as I said, check all the boxes for the full professional workstation. So Xeon, Quadro, all that stuff. So here's what we got. So let's go over the specs. So right now we have a Be Quiet 650 watt gold rated power supply. Um, this is actually the original one that was in my main editing system. Uh, that actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. It's just a regular power supply. Don't really need anything past that. Anything just to power all those stuff, and that's it. Um, we got two Quadro K5200s. These are eight gigabytes of VRAM a piece, and we'll have them in SLI, so they'll be pretty nice as well. Also, we've got ourselves a Xeon eight, no, two nine sixty or two six ninety. Um, I'll get you that, that number later on. It's an eight core processor. Um, as well as the motherboard. It was a like 250 bucks um, with the actual not like 16 gigabytes of worth of RAM. So this is of course 64 gigabytes worth of RAM. And over here, um, while technically this is not $850, if you want to get an SSD to put in there, I'm actually all out of SSDs because um, my EVJ power supply decided it was going to fry all of them. So yeah, uh, that's also coming back from RMA. I'm gonna be a little pissed if I don't get at least one SSD back because I, I, I was pretty salty about that because I had some data. I had a full video worth on there that I was expecting to get data off of and it's cooked. You heard a pop and it was smoking. So yeah, it's uh, pretty cooked. So we've got the 64 gigabytes of RAM for video editing, more than enough you'll need for 4K. Um, this is of course a CPU that's got pretty much enough firepower to handle okay of 1080p editing. So it's kind of borderline 4K and then the graphics cards. Well, yes, not for video editing, especially for Premiere. It's, it's, it, it was more trying to go for the full professional level. So you got two graphics cards, all that stuff. Let's start building this and putting this together. So next it's time just to put in the CPU and the RAM and that's just pretty simple. Uh, I sat, but the board sadly only had four slots so I couldn't do 128 gigs, but oh well. And uh, that's good. We also have ourselves a um, sketchy liquid cooling loop that we're gonna put on this. Yeah. Okay, so the entire kit arrived. Apologies for the 3D printer in the background. You may hear it. I'm working on some Christmas presents. And um, here is everything that we get. I've got a bunch of boxes here. It actually came in a big box with some of the other video stuff that we're doing. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at what we got here. So I think we have, oh, here's some tubing. Here's the tubing. Okay. Pretty, actually surprisingly pretty decent tubing. Uh, put that box over there. Um, we got, Swimming fan, yeah. A deep, cool fan, so actually a decent quality fan. Also looks like we get an LED ring around it. The fan is actually higher quality than I expected, so yeah, good on them. So a fan, put this box over there as well. Put this actually over here. Um, assuming some more fans. Yep, another fan. So two of the same fans. Okay, um, we have, it's like some type of foam brick. Oh yes, the pump. So this pump is actually pretty heavy too, surprisingly. Yeah, actually a pretty solid pump there as well. Maybe you have some mounting bracket or something. Standard power connector. Um, yeah, okay, so a standard pump. Um, what else do we have? Oh, the radiator, of course. You have a the 200 mil radiator. Oh, 
Okay. Not that bad. Um, pretty solid, actually. Radiator. And then over here, we should have some other things. Oh, yes, the reservoir. Looks like all the bearings, fittings, etc. Looks like they give us some uh, things to mount it with. And we get ourselves, oh, the blocks. I don't know if this is two blocks, or we get a liquid cooling block for CPU and GPU. And it looks like we get some type of mounting brackets or mounting screws as well. There are no instructions, so that means that I get to have a fun time figuring out how exactly they did this, or want us to do this, I guess. Um, the reservoir looks cool. Uh, I think this is for uh, putting stuff into. Okay, so we should be all good to get started. Let's take off some of these bearings and see what we have to work with for the bearings. Well, this is, so for a hundred bucks, it's obviously not the most expensive or really cheap in the common sense that I would say cheap, but it definitely, at least these fittings are actually decent quality, um, but it's definitely something that I would say still is the cheapest out there. And really what today's video is about is can you get liquid cooling for $100 on a GPU and CPU setup. So here we go. We have like fittings on both here, up and down. We should have some type of tops. Okay, so we've got, looks like we got everything to get started. Um, looks like we got screws. I've got to figure out how to, without any instructions, this will be interesting. This is too, this is glass. Maybe glass or high acrylic. No, they seem like glass. So these I assume are to mount the, well that, that put a little damage in that. Uh, but no, these are I would assume are to mount the reservoir. And then we have, yeah, pull out from down. Okay, so there's the reservoir. Looks pretty good. So we can get going from here. Now I just want you to gather here and look at this wonderfulness as I try to assemble a reservoir outside a computer. Now normally, normally, not only do I do this wrong, but normally I'd recommend that you do this inside the computer, but since this was like really cheap, I didn't quite trust it. So I ended up actually just trying to do it outside. I know I should have been done inside. People are going to complain. I should have measured stuff all that, but still should have been done inside. Yep, so for the case that I've chosen, I've actually picked out a wonderful um, case back here. This is actually one that I'm just familiar with. I think it's actually my bro younger brother's older one. It's okay. The graphics card from Wish will not uh, die. If you guys are wondering about that graphics card from Wish, I still have it. It's a... Uh, Wonderful, wonderful piece of, uh... so here's the case. I'm going to get the um, motherboard mounted in there, and I already have planned out where we're putting the, um, the water loop and stuff, so let's get this built in there and we'll go from there. You know, people ask me sometimes, why is the cable management so bad on some of my videos? They're like, I hope you didn't give them that computer like that. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And to be honest with you, sometimes it is. And it's not the fact that I don't know how to cable manage. It's the fact that like, for example, right now, and my favorite is when people also say that I'm like, look high in my videos. For the record, I don't smoke anything. Uh, I have asthma issues that run in the family, all that stuff. So anyway, point being, they come in there and they're like, oh yeah, you know, you, uh, you either look high or you know, you, you, you didn't cable manage, that, manage it nice or something like that. And the answer I tell them usually is like, you know, I have like 12 different physics assignments due tomorrow. And I also have some new calculus assignments. All that stuff that's wonderful for engineering is also all due tomorrow. So if you want to talk about procrastination, take a look at this channel real quick. This would be what you consider ultimate procrastination, making a YouTube video when I have a lot due tomorrow. Now, I probably will all get it done. I'm not worried about that. That's actually, that's actually once I get this video uploaded and done, 
I'm going to run downstairs and get that working. But for the most part, isn't it surprising the fact that a lot of people actually don't know that I'm still in uh, school and stuff for that, um, working towards a PhD in computer engineering. Um, but for the most part, people just don't, don't consider, they don't, don't think I'm either that young or all that stuff or just don't know and they always jump to conclusions on what they think that I should be doing or know how to do or should be doing with my time when in reality I'm just here fooling around and if it was serious heck even if I had a you know, million subscribers etc it still wouldn't be serious or professional I think the most professional I think I got so far is these lights in this camera that's about it um, oh yeah by the way by the way just you know we're off on a tangent already I've got some wonderful little um, uh, like whiteboards kind of things boards I guess and I'm going to take all the boxes back here because everyone my favorite other thing is too people complain always about how I have I'll say something like you know I'm broke or something and I can't get another test system which I finally did and they're like oh yeah you have all this hardware back there actually this has got cables in it but these are all like boxes don't have anything in them um, when I build computers for people yeah I keep the boxes that's kind of thing so I'm going to cut them all out, flatten them all out, and put them on a board now. And I'm probably also going to put like a rail on the back so the boards can slide. And that way I can keep all this area back here for storage because these boxes take up a lot of space. So that's that. Let's get these two graphics cards mounted in there as well. I'm going to throw these in here. Um, yeah, pretty much just standard quadros. Um, I think I also had a Wi-Fi card too somewhere. I don't remember where I put but there was some type of Wi-Fi card that I had, or LAN card, sorry, that had, um, I think it was two Ethernet ports, two one gigabit maybe, or just gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, but no, I really like just standard um, having multiple Ethernet ports because like my NAS server or whatever has the, um, uses uses the J, or 3J6 or RJ6, whatever, RJ6 or whatever. Um, okay, and then the next thing, so, as I said, though, I would recommend an SSD if you were someone that was trying to do this as a more professional thing. Obviously, this is more going to serve as, I guess, like an extra backup test system. I usually like to have an, a backup just in case, like, my main goes down. I still can edit videos, um, especially when, you know, right now, trying to go through school and stuff, people always wonder why I don't have money. And it's like, oh, well, oh, that and I like to give people computers because... Kids without computers is really a bad thing for mine. I just probably have a soft heart, that's all. I spend my money on things like that, giving kids computers and stuff. Um, yep, there we go. SLI bridge is in there. Okay, so here we go. Here's what we're looking at so far. I'm thinking that's looking pretty nice. I mean, for only 850 bucks with the custom loop in there, that's looking pretty nice. Yeah, you know, when I first actually tried doing this video, it was the bad power supply, right? And it was an EVGA power supply. And here goes me, who's sitting back here thinking, oh, great. Well, you know, I just, you know, my, this whole video isn't going to work out because I think it's the pump that's having problems. No, it ain't the pump. Nah. Nope, no pump. Issues with pump. Mm -mm. It's just the fact that, you know, the lovely lovely power supply has decided it's going to fry my literal all of my ssds and you know that's a wonderful wonderful experience if you haven't had that experience already i don't recommend it that's there all right i don't have the pump in the computer that'd be that'd be an, that'd be an important detail to um include and then another thing i need to get around to doing is getting like an air blower or something to get rid of um the dust on the 1 to 10 list of like stupid things, I'm not a big fan of actually putting the loop in with the computer. So what do we got? We got an Intel Xeon 289, 2689. 2 gigahertz, you got X, X79 motherboard, how much RAM we're looking at, 64 gigabytes, we should have the dual quadros and SLI, let's do device manager, 
Let's see, display adapters. We got two Quadro K5000s. And uh, there we go. So, in the uh, next little video, we'll go through and work on actually going through and building up and testing this. Because uh, I've got to install and actually get some better SSDs and stuff. But yeah, that should be almost everything.